Hello my friends and welcome, let's go for the front lines review, it seems like something is happening and going to happen, something really big, because according to the latest information from the Ukrainian official command, Ukraine started the massive shelling of Verbova and Novoprokopovka villages where the main Russian forces are located, so probably there's gonna be the attempt for the major attack performed by Ukrainian army to finally break the Russian defense lines in that area. In certain places, for example over here, the defense lines of the Russian army were already broken and we may see the acceleration of the Ukrainian army attack, for example in Verboa. Not a long time ago our soldiers went into the village and took more ground in this place. The enemy also confirms the unusually high activity of Ukrainian artillery. They say that it is the sign of the preparation for Ukraine to start the new advancement. That is what they draw on their chats, the Ukrainian advancement over here towards Nova Prokopovka, towards Verbova and eastbound to the Russian positions. For this day Ukraine still uses the small groups to advance, but we have the information that Ukraine accumulated reserves for the major strike. It could be like that in a nearby future and the speaker of the Ukrainian army confirms the information that we should expect some sort of the good news which will come from Verbova and Nova Prokopovka village in this sector of the front lines. Why the Ukrainian army is advancing right now probably it is the political decision that was also told by our Western allies after President Zelensky visit to United States of America. Many politicians on the West are waiting for the actual result of the Ukrainian counterattack, but Russia had enough time to prepare the defense lines. Probably Ukraine might be successful just right now, when our army is up to break the main Russian defense. Unfortunately, this new attack will bring more losses for the Ukrainian army, but we also have no other choice. Putin is not willing to withdraw their soldiers. Even more, they are planning to continue the special military operation till 2025. The Russian defense minister Shoigu himself said about it on a briefing with his deputies and the generals in command center. He said that all of the next year there will be the war in Ukraine, not because Ukraine is not willing to negotiate, but because Russia is pushing to achieve their goal of the special military operation. Well, definitely they are not able to achieve their goals to put the puppet government in Kyiv to occupy the most territories of Ukraine. No, they will not be successful with that anymore, but they are trying. So then someone says that Ukraine should negotiate with Russia. Ukraine should negotiate with a country that wants to continue the war. It is nonsense. Ask Kremlin first whether they want to finish this madness. It seems like not. They want to continue this war and it will not last for one year as they say. They already told that they will occupy Kyiv in just three days. This war unfortunately may last for even longer time. That's my personal prediction. I hope it will finish very very soon. However, I see the signs that uh, this is definitely a long-term conflict. Strangely, but Admiral and chief of the Russian Black Sea Marine Fleet was presented on the meeting via video conference. He didn't say anything, so he definitely could be alive. And the information that yesterday was presented by Ukrainian officials saying that this guy had lost his life was probably not truthful. But I already shared it in my yesterday's video. So Ukrainian officials today say that they will cross-check this information because they were sure that the commander of the Russian Black Sea Navy lost his life. But it seems like definitely the guy is alive. Again the bright evening in Moscow region. My friends, there are dozens of the drones spotted in Russia every day. It's hard for me to report everything. Those events are so ordinary that if I tell about those, it will be just the routine news. Telling the city names and the drones were spotted there, it was kaboom over there. If something big happens, I'll obviously tell you about it. 
But for Russia, everything is going according to the plan. The special military operation is reaching its goals. The Russian army continued to receive the brand new artillery shells. Some of the soldiers start to complain that those shells, new shells, do not explode. They check out the detonator, but all of them were new and completely serviceable. They start to dig down into the shell and later on they found out, after removing this cup, try to guess what? That there is no TNT inside the shell. It's completely empty. And the comments of the Russian soldier, my friends, it's like Prigozhin. I want to stay. It's empty. No TNT. <laughs> what are you doing? Where's the TNT? Indeed, it's kind of funny because it highlights that this may only happen in Russia. Well, let's be honest, at least they have the new artillery shells. Okay, for the recent kaboom, it was the Chikalsky airfield in Sholkova, Moscow region, the government-operated airfield. Before, in that particular airfield were some of the sabotage attacks conducted by someone on a couple of the Russian airplanes plus one of the helicopter. We are speaking about those airplanes that were reportedly damaged and partially we have the satellite confirmation about this case. Russia removed those airplanes after the sabotage attack. This is the new photo just after one week. The airplanes were removed probably for the maintenance. Let's continue about the airplanes. It could be that Ukraine lost one of the MiG-29 on the other military airfield that was attacked by the Russian missiles or the drones. It's hard to say right now. I got this video from the Russian resources and definitely this is some sort of the airfield with fire on it. It's hard to say where exactly it happened. Russia says that it's the Kulbakina airfield in Mykolaiv Oblast which is not far away really from the front lines. And more about the losses in Ukrainian army, it's the first confirmation of the loss of the Rosemak armored vehicle, but it's hard to say whether it's completely lost or just turned over. Ukraine ordered around 100 of those vehicles from the Polish side. The last night Russia attacked the bordering crossing with Romania from the Ukrainian side and the big logistics center. Also at least 30 of the tracks were reported severely damaged or completely lost. They also supplied the humanitarian help for Ukrainians. The airstrikes was carried out by the Shahi drones mostly and Russia also attacked couple of more cities in Ukraine. About the Ukrainian grain scandal, it seems like Ukraine finally applied to the court of the trade organization against Poland, Slovakia and Hungary. The European Union Commission will also support Poland, Slovakia and Hungary in the court. It's logical, because those countries are the part of EU. Honestly, as for me, a very strange move from Ukraine. Andrzej Duda, the president of Poland, already commented that President Zelensky is a nice guy, but sometimes he got a very bad advices, and I would support that idea. A very bad advice, actually, to have the tensions with allies in the middle of the war. Well, we'll see how it goes. One of the biggest Russian ammunition warehouse was kaboomed yesterday by Ukrainian Hymer's system. This exact place was the storage for the Russian artillery shells plus the rocket artillery rockets. It is still loud out there because the shells continue to explode. Bulgaria will send the S-300 systems and missiles to Ukraine. Those are very rare nowadays. The only minus is that those missiles are defected and out of order, but Ukraine has the ability to restore the missiles and use them against the Russian attacks. Bulgaria now doesn't have the resources and equipment to maintain those missiles. That is why it may transfer those to Ukrainian army and those could be in use. So pretty much those are the good news. As you probably know, Elon Musk lowered the censorship restrictions for Twitter after he got this company under control. That is why, according to this Bloomberg article, the Elon Musk's Twitter, or X, is now the biggest outlet for the Russian propaganda. 
The European Commission also confirms that stuff. Well, I guess the freedom of speech also should have its own limits, otherwise the autocracy will have the nice platform for propaganda and potentially may destabilize the situation in democratic countries. Ukraine performs the tests of the underwater controlled torpedo that might be used in the future interesting operations conducted by Ukrainian special forces. Yet those are just the first steps for this kind of the weaponry to appear in Ukrainian army. But now Ukraine is quite flexible with those tools we don't need long-time approvals or bureaucracy to use those controlled torpedoes. Yes, some of them will not work, but finally, why not? There are lots of the places for experiments nowadays for Ukraine. As for the deep state military map, we have just a certain update in this area on the south from Bakhmut, just a light move by Ukrainian army across the railroad to this natural trench with the river and few of the legs. It is actually the great move because the rail line is on some certain elevation and after Ukrainian army crossed it, there is the valley that gives the opportunity to advance to Odradivka and to the north to Obodne. But still we expect the major strike not over here but on the south front lines as I told you in the beginning of this video. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Now don't forget to press the like to this video. Also, if you want to support my channel, there will be some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, you are awesome. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.